And this video is ably assisted by Devil May Care's Beer Logger Smoke Magic Smoked Logger. I have never had this one before. And I wasn't expecting it to look like that. But it should be good. Devil May Care always does pretty good beers. All right, but that's not the focus of today's video. Today I am doing a review of this Kaiwi HT112B multimeter that they sent me for the purpose of me reviewing. So this is that. If you remember from the mailbag a couple of weeks ago, I'll put a link to it up there. Um, I tried this out a little bit and it's a reasonable little meter. Um, it comes with, as you might expect, a set of leads. It comes with a spare fuse. It comes with four CR2032 batteries, two of which are in there and two are spares in here. So that is uh, all cool. This is a reasonable little carrying case that all packs into. The meter has a rubber wrap around it, rubber E, maybe not rubber itself, but it's probably good for a drop off a workbench or two or three. It's essentially a cell phone case wrapped around it is what it is, but it's, it's nice and soft and it uh, protects the meter. The pair of leads that come with it, nice flexible cables as you would expect. The only downside that I see with these is the connector. On your left, we have the connectors for this uh, Kiwitz meter. On the right, we have a standard set of banana jacks that come with most meters. This means that you have to be careful if you're ordering replacement uh, leads for this meter. I'm sure they're available. Not that that's a huge problem. I don't think I have ever had a set of multimeter cables die on me in 40 some years of using multimeters, including some of those years being really abusive and, un, and uh, not knowing what I'm doing. But yeah, so I've never had a set fail, but just keep that in mind. And just for uh, durability, witness this old Hiyoki. I've had this thing since the eighties and I bought it at a pawn shop. And as you can see, the leads are capped of, they can't even be replaced, but for over all those years, and I carried this thing around in my vehicle and used it, uh, at work and whatnot. And there's not even really a scuff. Oh, there's a little tiny scuff right there, but that's just on the surface. So the fact that these leads may be difficult to find replacements for is not a huge deal, but it's something that you want to keep in, or keep in mind just in case you wanted to you know, use it with alternate types of leads or something like that. That aside, let's just go quickly, quickly through the specs from the manual. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on these. You can look them up if you want, or you can pause the video and look at them. Um, the DC voltage range up to 600 volts down to... Uh, 60 millivolt range and it has both a volts and a millivolts range on it uh, both for DC and AC uh, the input impedance on the voltage uh, readings is 10 meg uh, for AC it can do up to 1 kilohertz or down to 40 hertz so that should be good for any line voltages DC current here is one of the things that you want to watch out for it maxes out at 600 milliamps and the fuse is a 650 milliamp fuse it says it's 600, but it's actually, a, but the spare is a 650. We'll see what's inside the meter when we take it apart. Uh, both AC and DC current. It also has a, a, a microamps range, so you can get really sensitive at the low end. So what it lacks in the high end, it definitely makes up for on the low end, at least according to the specs. Resistance up to 60 meg uh, range with various different resolutions, depending on what range it's in. And it auto ranges voltages and resistance it has capacitance functions up to six millifarad down to six nanofarad uh, and again that's the range and the resolution changes again you can measure frequency and or duty cycle so again the resolution depends on what range it's in and it auto ranges then we have diode check uh mode and it can uh, do voltages on diodes or forward voltages on diodes up to two volts so it can do some leds like the red the older reds greens and yellows that are 1.6 1.7 ish volts and then the continuity buzzer anything over 50 or below 50 ohms it's going to uh, buzz as continuity so there is just the briefest of tours of the manual 
So push and hold the big red button for a couple of seconds to bring it online. And when it comes up, it comes into this auto mode. You can see it's hunting between volts, ohms, and continuity. And when I give it continuity, we get the chirp. Goes to zero, but you also notice that it lights up over the top here. See that? So that's kind of good if you're in a noisy environment or something. You can, you can see that. Hmm. One downside about that big screen is that it's kind of reflective under the lighting. But because I've been playing with this thing for a few days, I went and printed myself a little stand, which is basically just a cell phone stand. But with that, you guys can see it without the glare. Actually, let's see what happens when you turn the backlight on. Does that help you any? Yeah, it does. Right. Backlight on mode it is. So as I usually do when I'm testing a meter, I test it against the most accurate meter that I can borrow from work, which is this Fluke 289. So first, let's check one of these half-depleted 9-volt batteries that I've got kicking around here. So there, 8.83, and the Fluke shows 8.824, which is, I call that pretty much bang on. Let's try it against my LCR calibrated reference. So the resistance on this thing is uh, 179.99K ohms, 179.7. 179.8 once it counts up a little bit. I think that's right there in the ballpark, don't you? Let's try the capacitance mode. The capacitor in here is 149.69 nanofarads. 150 it says, 149.9. I don't think we can ask for better from than that. Let's go back into ohms mode for just a second and try a really low resistance. This is an 8 ohm resistor. 8.18.0 it says, and because it's under 50 ohms, it's also giving us continuity. That could get annoying if you're doing low resistances. Let's test one of these big honking Schottky diodes. Um, Schottky diodes are a lower forward voltage than your typical silicon diode, which is their claim to fame. There we go, 1.72 volts forward voltage on that guy. And on the Fluke, 1.635. It's pretty close to 1.7. Not bang on, but it's pretty damn close. Uh, let's try this little red LED here, which should be in the range of you know, 1.6, 1.7. This particular one shows 1.79 volts on the Fluke. 1.785 on the Kiwites, and it lights it up. They both do that. That's good. Passes that test. So far, I mean, for the price, for the size, for the convenience, I think this is a reasonable little meter so far. So let's try current now. We'll tap the smart function to get into milliamps mode, and it warns me that the leads are in the wrong spot, which is excellent to know. I'll just move that over to the amps position. We won't damage anything, you see. So there, it's noticed that that's in position. Good. So for this test, I have the 8 ohm resistor, which is why it's out on the bench. I have 5 volts on my power supply over here. So we're not going to exceed the current limit on that meter. That's the important part of this exercise. Put that there and that there. Turn power supply on. And that is showing 300 and... 15, 318, let's wiggle that, yeah, 318, 320 milliamps with the Fluke. It says 395 milliamps, and just for reference, over on the power supply, it's also showing about 385 to 390, depending on how tight I'm holding the connections together. So that's reasonably close, near, and that's about mid-range on this thing's capability, so that's good. So with the lead still connected in current mode, I just tap the function button here to change modes it will only go into the current measuring modes it will not go out of those with the leads in the wrong spot i like that that is good of the thing it is protecting you from yourself so i guess before i got carried away i should have pointed out the 
the different ranges it has. So it has the volts, ohms, and continuity just in the autopilot mode at the beginning. Then it's millivolts, AC, and DC. Uh, frequency and duty cycle of hertz. Um, capacitance, diode, microamps, AC, and DC. Milliamps, AC, and DC, which is where I just was. And then non-contact voltage live. And non-contact voltage is a little sensor right back there. So when you put it close to something that's hot, it lights up up top, it chirps, and it shows you right there. And there's actually two different versions of the NCV, NCV and live. So if there is two different things in these modes up here, that's what the select button is for down here. So if you put it into live mode, then it's you can touch your probe to something and see if it's live or not. Obviously the ground's not going to show, but the live is. So you're just touching one probe. You don't need both probes for that. So you can go poking around inside a panel or something. And that same select button, notice has a little flashlight uh, icon on it. If you push and hold it, you get a little flashlight. It's not super bright, but again, in a dark place backstage or something, uh, or under a desk or in a, in a closet or something like that, in a wiring closet, that's probably enough to see what you're doing anyway. Let's see how it does on relatively low voltage AC waveforms using my signal generator here. So I got 0.1 kilohertz on here, aka 100 hertz, and there's 100 hertz there. It's a sine wave, it's showing 49.1% duty cycle, which is, I guess, reasonable enough, which makes sense. So let's go to, oops, a square wave, 49.9% duty cycle. Um, 50% duty cycle here. Let's crank that up to, I don't know, let's go to 75, 74.9. I'd say that's close enough. There's 100 kilohertz. Okay, so there is 1,000 kilohertz, aka 1 meg, and it is showing it nicely there. That's maxed out my, my generator at 2 meg, and it's showing it there no problem. Although the duty cycle it's not picking up on. That's interesting. Okay, so it seems to lose track of the duty cycle when it gets really high. Okay, so at 300 kilohertz, it can track the duty cycle. Seems to lose track of the duty cycle a little over 900 kilohertz. But I don't think you're going to be doing a lot of PWM way up there for your experiments. So, yeah, that could work pretty well for... Uh, for checking PWM on your Arduino or, or other circuits or radio control circuits, actually. Oh, oh, the uh, servos and whatnot on radio control stuff tends to be PWM. Okay, that is cool. I hadn't played with that yet. All right, so now that we've played with it a little bit and shown that it is just as accurate as uh, any other meter I've got around here within, you know, within reasonable numbers, let's pop it open and see what's inside it though i'm not expecting anything too earth shattering because it's going to be digital circuitry but just for completeness and for my curiosity okay so there is the four screws out do i need a spudger or can i just do this with my non-existent fingernails oh yeah it just slides straight off okay so what do we have there is the led for the flashlight there is something a little socket or something there is the fuse which is the only reason that normal people would have to lift the back off let's just see what that fuse is remember i said the spare that came with it i think was a 650 milliamp this one's a 630 that's in there oh no the spare is a 630 milliamp as well sorry my memory's not what it should be so it looks like we've got a diode bridge over there plus another diode in the middle just for good measure down by the fuse, you got a whole bunch of little resistors down here coming off the uh, off the input lead. So it's not using just a piece of wire like some cheap uh, meters do. It's actually using a bunch of resistors, and they're not even all the same. So it is fairly closely calibrated by the looks of it. What we got over here? Got a PTC protecting the input. Got some resistors on the input side as well. I'm curious what that little guy is there. We'll have to dig deeper. A couple of transistors and stuff, blah, blah, blah. There is the two main chips by the looks of it. There's one. 
There is the other. I'm going to guess one is doing the metering functions and one is doing the display functions. I have to see where all those traces go, but I'm guessing this one over here with all those traces popping through the board is probably the display chip. Let's see if I'm right. There's four screws down at this end surrounding all the pushy buttons. That's a nice touch. There we go. And it looks like the input jacks are, are all part of that separate from the body. Okay. So this little guy that I was curious about. HFD31-3 L2S is a relay. It is a small signal relay. Uh, three volt coil. That's cool. Anyway, surrounding it, we have the four push buttons. There is the beep beep and nothing else on the front, except of course for this monster LCD. So you can see it's backlight down there and a big zebra strip all the way along that side, which I'm not going to pull off. But that is on the same side as all these connections here. So I'm going to stick with my original estimation. That is the display uh, chip. And this guy over here is the metering chip. Actually, I guess the last thing to see is just this little antenna strip up here. And there is the NCV sensor. And there is the LED that lights up uh, when either you've got voltage from the non-contact voltmeter or you've got continuity in the continuity mode, which is separate, of course, from the flashlight LCD, LED in the back. Anyway, putting it back together should go pretty much exactly the same way. Just click it down over these two little clips on the side here. There it is back together, and as soon as you put the batteries in, it powers itself back on into automatic mode. Right. Slip that guy back on, and there we go. One multimeter. I'm, I mean, for, what's the price on it? It wasn't that expensive. It's, uh, it's a pretty solid little meter. I think it'll take a fair bit of bouncing around in the abuse. Um, maybe don't abuse your leads, but for a lot of uses, that will be a pretty good little meter. Um, my application here, the main reason that I found it so attractive is that it has this massive screen on it, which makes it easier for you guys to see what's going on. But beyond that, um, who's this meter for? It's not for electricians. Uh, for backyard shade tree mechanics, probably. Although that current, uh, that, that uh, 600 milliamp current limit may be a limitation for, for those guys. Um, for general electronics, hobby electronics, absolutely, all day long. Uh, I think this would be a fine little meter for, for that purpose. Um, for somebody working backstage, I don't know, maybe it'd be a good one to throw in your, uh, throw in your belt pouch and uh, have super handy. I think it'll take some knocking around. It's quite solid. Uh, it, it doesn't twist or flex or anything. Uh, it doesn't have the the rotary switch to wear out on it like some of these kind do, or like most meters actually. It's auto-ranging, which is nice, um, just especially for beginners or something like that. I think it's a reasonable little meter. So there will be a link down in the description uh, which points to... Amazon.ca uh, because I'm in Canada that's where they set it up uh, when they when they sent me the link um, it is available on Amazon.com as well but if you go to Amazon.ca if you're buying from Canada then I do have a discount code down below currently Amazon.ca doesn't have any available Amazon.com does though and their current price oh it's on sale right now uh, they're their standard price is $32.99. They've currently got it on sale for just under five bucks off, so that's cool. Um, admittedly, that's American dollars, so translate to your to your local uh, currency, etc., etc. Anyway, the this listing just has most of the same stuff straight out of the manual, so I'm not going to bother with that. Uh, we've already seen it, and you can follow the link if you want to read it. Here's the price from Amazon.ca in Canadian dollars when it's in stock. $46.99 normally, $38.99 on sale. And then again, there's that discount code down below in the description if you choose to use it. 
So there we go. All in all, I think a nice little meter um, should uh, should stand up to a fair bit of use, especially lightweight hobbyist use. Uh, and for under 50 bucks in whatever currency you want to look at, I think it's not a bad deal. Um, again, they sent it to me free of charge for this review. I'm not getting any kickbacks if you buy it or not. Uh, that's That's up to you. Um, I'm going to be using this one, as I said, because it has a fairly large display on it and will hopefully be visible to you guys. I think I might have to tweak the angle just a bit on the kickstand that I built for it here just to get it there, but not there. Anyway, um, questions, comments down below. I will be back, uh, in the future with another video that won't be a review. Um... Let me know what you think, and I will talk to you later.